critics who privatize with your pen and keep your Morally bankrupt superhero dude wears an ironic happy face button on his robe while making late night tea. That the Soviet Union's aggression at the Afghan border... Movie opens with always riveting Middle East foreign affairs news story. The United States does not start fights. Movie gets the best Nixon impersonator they could find at your local bar at 3 a.m. Seriously, I don't care if he's supposed to be in his fifth term or whatever. This is the least Nixon-y Nixon that ever Nixon. It's like the casting director said, and for Nixon, find me someone that looks more like Gerald Ford or a super old David Boreanaz. What are the chances the Russians will actually attack the United States? Pat Buchanan. Movie plays the best of Dana Carvey on Saturday Night Live without Dana Carvey. Director pays homage to his last hit via hotel room number vandalism. We find out later this is Ozymandias, but this is not Ozymandias. Guy who wants to kill comedian wastes time throwing him across the room instead of out the window, which he does later anyway. Zack Snyder's slow motion fetish. Incredibles meets lazy flashbacks meets opening credits montage meets, oh my god, this thing is over three hours long. Is this a world where Gotham exists, but Batman is only a comic? And what kind of opera house plasters Batman comics on its walls anyway? Okay, let's run them down. Black haired Black Widow, Pussy Wing Dude, Discount Cap, Blind Squirrel, Old Man Paperwork, Cigar Bastard, Mrs. Cigar Bastard, and The Hangman. What a fearsome crew. Credits shot the signs to remind me of Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow, for some reason. This movie is alternate history, but this newspaper headline kind of meshes with regular history, so I'm confused. Also, in this alternate timeline, did Ben Affleck and Josh Hartnett still fall in love with the same girl? Discount Captain America tragically dies in the DC vs. Marvel Wars of 1956. The Last Supper shot only has nine people in it, rendering all the other religious subversion contained in the picture moot, including female pregnant Jesus. Supposed superhero can be dragged by two dudes into a car with no problem. Looks like John Doe exists in this reality too. Newspapers abbreviating Russian with Russ. I know at least two guys named Russ that would have a problem with this. I can't tell you how much this single shot inspired X-Men Days of Future Past. So far this alternate reality thing has shown me the same presidents as reality and now the same Vietnam War. When does the timeline split? Wait, so someone left this note here with these two bodies, but it only blew away with the wind just after being seen and discovered by law enforcement? This is the third super close-up of the smiley face button this movie's given me in 11 minutes, and it's kind of getting annoying. Also, all three have involved smiley faces and blood. I'm getting the feeling this movie does not want me to be happy. Rorschach's Journal, October 12th, 1985. Or you could just be honest and call it Rorschach's narration. Having seen the incredible height from which comedian was thrown out of his apartment, this grappling hook has such amazing reach it gives Batman penis envy. Now the whole world stands on the brink. Way too many minutes of Rorschach's terrible Mar from Sin City narration impression. A comedian died in New York. Somebody knows why. Yeah, but does somebody know the meaning of the word obvious? Watch the door. Dude then immediately walks away from the door. I mean, what the f***? Is Rorschach impervious to bullets? Or is that cop really that bad of a shot? With Nixon forcing you out. And you think I voted for that prick five times? Why? Five terms? I kind of feel like even if term limits were removed, America would never elect the same dude five times in a row. We're fickle, and that would span 20 years with a new generation of voters and five terms? Let's talk downstairs. The Batcave. I mean, the discount Batcave. Maybe someone's picking off costumed heroes. So the non-costume heroes are getting off scot-free? It's a maintenance hatch. I'd have let you out two blocks north. Yeah, I remember. Came there often when we were partners. Dan tells Rorschach something he already knows, so that Rorschach can tell Dan something back that he knows. And who was this dialogue for again? Oh. Mothman's in an asylum in Maine. I guess nobody heard that because it's raining. Giant blue ass will not fully prepare you for all the blue nudity you're about to consume in this movie. Magic! Dreams! That is what I had before! I was a hero, goddammit! Acting! What is he doing right now, anyway? And why can't he put pants on to do it? You might think I'm gonna sin the fact that Cares Not Dr. Manhattan is a dick, but instead I'm actually sending the decision to use 99 Left Balloons as the soundtrack for said dickness. Also, even though history took a major detour to the Minutemen and the Watchmen, 99 Left Balloons still exists. He just keeps getting further away from me. Complaining about your boyfriend to the guy you're going to fuck later. Is this the first time he's tried to do this and she's turned him down? Or is it like the 47th? And why does he try this ugliness right after he and a bunch of other superheroes just pose for a picture? And why did she decide to undress in the color of money instead of a bathroom? All bad guys are rapists. Wait, what the f*** is going on here? Watchman steals the ride of the Valkyries from Apocalypse Now. Also, when Dr. Manhattan is winning Vietnam, he decides he needs to wear some undies because his blue dong is a war crime. Also, straight up murder, many times over, but whatever. USA! USA! Why did Manhattan even leave anyone alive for this asshole to shoot his handgun at? The war is over now. We must talk about this baby. Jesus, how long has Vietnam been going on with somebody like Dr. Manhattan going around disintegrating people? This woman's like, what, seven months pregnant? Straight up murder. And somehow Dr. Manhattan did nothing to stop it. You could have turned the gun into steam, the bullets into mercury. The rapist is right, but I'm uncomfortable saying he would be amazing at cinema sins. Seems like a publicity stunt. Not in it for the ink. Hardy har. I mean, seriously, how is the comedian ever allowed in this crime-fighting group to begin with? 
He's a grade A dickhead through and through. I know you're all superheroes and everything, but could you guys put that fire out? This is the longest funeral ever. It's long enough for three flashbacks. Movie saves money on this futuristic fiery riot scene by just using stock footage of modern day Vancouver following a Stanley Cup playoffs loss. Somehow this society is so f***ing angry at superheroes they're burning them in effigy. Thanks for saving our lives, repeatedly, now die! Also it seems like if the Watchmen had just gotten rid of Comedian in the first place, nobody would have gotten mad at the vigilantes. Tombstone misspells Harry Dean Morgan, but I guess it did get one name right. Well apparently some folks in this universe have elf ears. I did not know that. Okay, I guess. Rorschach needs to pick the lock of the cemetery gate when he has the best grappling hook ever made. Blue Man Group Sex. Dr. Manhattan definitely has too many dicks on the dance floor. So while he's sitting on the bed next to her bra, missing her, does he still have three other hymns out there working on his research? I don't know anybody except for goddamn superheroes. In this alternate timeline, if you look up first world problems in the dictionary, there's a picture of this girl's face. DC Comics. Walking down an alley always means bad guys are waiting to stir some shit up. The movie cuts back and forth between the alley fight and Dr. Manhattan on television, and someone forgot to tell the director not to do that. At what point does a gang of street toughs realize that these were the wrong people to mess with? And if they're gonna keep fighting, what about fighting these two all at once? This is a movie, isn't it? Did you have that gun all along? All these reporters scrambling to get near him for a soundbite or somehow forgetting the last five minutes of press conference evidence that he does in fact cause cancer. I said, leave me alone! Jesus, does Dr. Manhattan know everybody's address? Or did those people all die? Or are they on Vulcan right now? Or what? Yep, the eyeglasses in the breast pocket survive the ass beating of a dozen hooligans because reasons. Us getting mugged. Well, Lady, you two did willingly walk into a dark alley just after noting how bad a part of town you were in. So, this movie is 22 flashbacks, 15 flash forwards, and 8 f if you know where we are scenes all strung together in random order. This is basically what happened to the Hulk, right? Also, what made this door close? It's that f***ing demon from Paranormal Activity, isn't it? The program's locked in. We can't override the time lock. Why the f*** not? Holy f***, it took 30 seconds for this clock to move 2 seconds. Pretty sure this is a flashback within a flashback within a flashback, but even if it isn't, the fact that I think it is suggests a problem with the movie's concept of time. Yes, John. Good. Flashbackception? John survives this and gets stronger from it. It's the only photograph of me anyone has. How is that possible? Even in whatever the f early 1900s this shit is taking place, there'd be more than one photograph of someone as smart and important as him, right? If I'm to have a symbol, it's going to be the standard power button icon from the early 2000s. I see he finally decided to cover up his dick, for now at least. How did that conversation go? Uh, Dr. Manhattan, we'd love your input on military endeavors, but our scientists find your large blue penis, um, distracting. Newly formed superhero shows his strength by destroying a tank cliche. This could have been handled a different way. I never said the Superman exists and he is American. Yeah, we know. It was this guy, the news reporter, that said that. Janie tells me she is afraid and worried. She says I am like a god now. She also tells me how horrid our Christmas tree choices were this year. She's beautiful. Even though I don't really have an interest in this type of thing anymore, I'll leave my wife for a brand new woman for some reason. Janie accuses me of chasing jailbait. Jeez, how old is Malin Ackerman supposed to be in whatever year this is? That left no marks at all. This is straight up murder, but the guy doesn't die, so it's all okay. If Vite is behind this fake assassination attempt, he must really hate his secretary and Lee Iacocca. Diagonal Crossing, that's super jaywalking. And I endorse any law enforcement personnel that go after them for it. And there was something rewarding in his eyes. This movie is telling me that Rorschach is going to get vital information about Veidt's fake assassination from this random street thug. And this is a level of omniscience I am not going to let slide. Veidt's assassin was a local lowlife named Roy Chess. Someone the cops never thought to check after the assassination attempt. Awesome reveal, but how does someone shoot this dude between the eyes and leave him upright like this? I mean, even if they manipulated the body after death, how'd they get that to sit up straight? The amazing intuition of Vite continues, as he sends out a random street thug he knows Rorschach is going to find, goes to Moloch's house and kills him, and knows within 15 minutes or so that Rorschach's gonna be at Moloch's house so he can frame him for the murder. Dude on the stairs just stands here doing nothing while watching his fellow officers get torched. This asshole goes full stormtrooper. You never go full stormtrooper. Tell me what you see. Rorschach, Rorschach, Malkovich? Movie inspires first Captain America movie's bully scene cheesiness. It was dark when the murderer got back. Well, yes, it was dark when you got here too, so makes sense, but go on with your bad narrating self. Who the f would do this upon finding their home broken into? Anyone with a brain? No? That's what I thought. I mean, dude, you're standing in all the light. Who's out there? Who is it? Asking these questions is maybe stupider than barging in here in the first place. I can't help him. While this is something the prison shrink might say, it's not something he'd say to the lowlife guarding the door. He'd say it to the warden, or a judge, or his wife. Anyone but this f ass holding the door open for him. Whoa, this prison is serving french fries? I thought all prison food was inedible. But french fries? Maybe I should revisit a few of my caper ideas. You're locked in here with me! Excellent demonstration of power, but still, did you have to do it on french fry day? This is a dumb thing to do. Yeah, I just need a couple minutes. 
three-hour movie has time for the hero can't get it up storyline. In this dream, these two have sex on Mars, for some reason. Hey, where's the bone from that guy's boner? Huh? Huh? Uh-huh. Oh. Nude costume contemplation. I used to be a masked Avenger too, remember? Marvel certainly does not remember. Every time some crime fighting has to be done, there's a full moon out. Yet another comic book movie where the heroes have to save children from a fire. Mom, is that guy in the space rocket? Is that Jesus? Okay, first of all, this is cheesy and stupid as f Second of all, Jesus doesn't wear owl costumes. Third of all, Jesus and space rockets are almost completely incongruous at this point in scientific advancement. Fourth of all, space rocket. How are they gonna get all these people on this super small ship? Probably through editing and never showing you the back of the ship. Luckily, the power of slow motion will prevent Silk Spectre from third degree burns. Having delivered the fire survivors to a vacant lot behind a tall fence, the two superheroes fly off to f each other's brains out. The fourth, the fifth, the minor fall. I think both actors are hot here, and I'm down for a nudity-riddled sex scene between the two, which is what we get, but this is one of the worst covers of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah I've ever heard in my life. No, seriously, not sure if they were going for it, but movie definitely wins Weirdest Sex Scene of the Decade Award. And this movie came out the same decade as storytelling. As these two bang each other's brains out, I'm left to wonder, A, why is the moon so goddamn big? Is Bruce Almighty in town? Also B, which one of the hundreds of Dr. Manhattans cloned around the solar system do you think saw this? Firegasm. These guys somehow have a power saw to cut this guy's arms off, but couldn't smuggle in a gun or a knife. Why didn't they just do this at the very beginning? Why were they waiting outside so long? Also, where the f*** is he plugging this thing up? Aren't there like a thousand times too many book pages strewn about for, you know, a prison riot? Who the f*** is tearing out single pages of a book right now? And why? And why are they throwing that shit all over the place? All out prison riot, and only this douchebag and his henchmen are after Rorschach? Not bloody likely, not after what we were told earlier, but whatever. Go on with your paint-by-numbers Rorschach escape. No. What did you expect, dude? Do you not know what Rorschach can do? Why is this such a shock? Do nothing. Your move. Yeah, but what if Mickey Abbott from Seinfeld actually had an attack that could defeat Rorschach? He'd lose two to one, but Rorschach would be dead, so... How do we know he's still alive? He's alive. I can tell Rorschach is alive by looking at this dead body that isn't him. Who is this video game henchman running out of his cell when the entire prison is rioting on the other end of the hallway? Was he just hanging out in his cell waiting for somebody to fight? My expert gun handling skills tell me to point the gun two feet away from you and get distracted by any little thing. Excuse me, have to visit men's room. Why does Rorschach go from using definite articles to not using definite articles? Either they're important to him or they're not. I had to turn the screechers off so we'll be drawing fire soon. Oh, okay. Whatever that means. Some super owl dude just busted Rorschach out of prison. He lives over a garage right near here. What? How does this guy know this? And how convenient is it that they're this close while having this conversation? And how does this guy know this? And what? Why bless you, Hollis. Hollis calls Silk Spectre's mom, and suddenly 2.25 hours into this thing, we're suddenly supposed to care about the older generation of heroes in this film, who I thought were somewhere between useless filler and unnecessary backstory. Also, the presence of Carla Gugino is doing nothing to make this movie feel less Sin City-like. It's hard for me to believe these guys think this older version of Night Owl is the guy who beat them up in the alley earlier, but even harder to believe that after such an ass-kicking, they'd want to try to fight this guy again. If you already know the future, then why were you surprised when I left you? Silk Spectre would be excellent at cinema sins. When you left me, I left Earth. But she left you for good reason. And you had multiple other yous off doing science while you were making love to her. How do you have any feelings at all, dude? Since this Vite Enterprises computer is in the pyramid building, do they even need to look for who's behind this? Hey Rorschach, this computer says Vite Enterprises. Hey, I bet I know who's behind this. How f***ing bad is this guy's password if it's the same as one of the three books on his desk? I guess since it's 1985, intelligence hasn't been invented yet. Oh no! Information I already should have known by simple observation. Nice shot, but realize we didn't hear a bunch of bodies hitting the floor after they drank poison, so it's almost like it didn't happen. Ozymandias commits a mass murder, and yet the most puzzling thing in this scene is the sudden mythological rhino tiger hyena. What the f*** is this thing? Has he had it all along and I just never noticed it? I cannot imagine a more dangerous opponent. Except for Dr. Manhattan, maybe? That little trick that Manhattan just performed on Loring showed her nothing about what he sees or how he understands things. It was a hypnotist trick to bring back repressed memories, but understanding him? Nah. Why is this thing falling apart? I submit it's only because all-powerful Dr. Manhattan is allowing it to fall apart, as further evidence in his quest to get Silk Spectre to turn her back on Earth because he's all-powerful. He could stop it if he wanted. Will you smile if I admit I was wrong? Wait, what? You're just gonna take the blame because she's crying? Up until now, you were an emotionless... I'll f just end the sh already. It's like turning air into gold. Skip! Okay, I was gonna send the weird Vietnam War movie anthem, but the smiley face on Mars? That is worth five sins, and I think I'm being lenient. These idiots still somehow think they've gotten this far undetected. Since I have no idea what Ozymandias' powers are, this fight should be fun. Right? New York, Los Angeles, <laughs> Moscow, Hong Kong, 15 million people killed. 
What? You're gonna disintegrate those four cities and only kill 15 million? Humanity's savage nature will inevitably lead to global annihilation. Oh, hi there, Ultron. You're about a decade early. Killing millions. To save billions. Without having seen this movie before, I assume Dr. Manhattan is going to come back with his girlfriend to save the day. And Ozzy's gonna be all like, Preserve, I totally planned for you to come back. And then Manhattan's gonna be all like, Crazy Wombles, I totally predicted that too. And then the good guys will win. The end. What the f*** is this thing? Director put another reference to his last hit in this movie. Still not nearly the damage Superman did in Man of Steel. Well, I've never seen more dick in a mainstream movie, that's for sure. Sure I am familiar with this guy's dick by now. Isn't that fun? I think it's fun. I guess it's totally logical that Dr. Manhattan would survive this, since his human form also survived this. But why didn't Ozymandias think of that? And isn't it kind of stupid he walked into this place as one man when we've seen him split himself into as many as six Manhattans in this movie? Send in the clones! So, in other words, you took this giant tumble down the stairs for no f***ing reason. Giant Dr. Manhattan is terrible at scooping. Two superpowers retreating from war. Let's talk about Ozzy's plan. It required an intricate series of things to go right for it to work. All to kill millions of people. Just so the US and USSR wouldn't kill billions with nuclear weapons. Why not simply ask Dr. Manhattan to disarm all the world's nukes before they could be fired? With their considerable resources and power, that's not that big of an ask, is it? Then you could blame Manhattan for disarming the nukes and unite behind that, rather than millions dying. And I feel like there are a hundred other things he could have done before this that we don't have time to discuss in one video. No, so much punching. So very much punching. I know that Eddie Blake was my father. Definitely needed to tie up this not loose end before the three hour movie ended. Definitely. Phew, I'm so relieved. No, seriously. Ha, huh, alcoholism, am I right? Hey, just like this button at the beginning. I get it. Sure is lucky Rorschach left his diary at the one newspaper that needed to find a story from its crank file. Maybe you should have made a stop at Kinko's and distributed more copies than one. Ah, you're right. This one newspaper was all you needed. Nothing. It's just that all men are sure it never happened to them, and most women at one time or another have done it, so you do the math. What do you expect? The comedian's dead. Hello, darkness, my old friend. We're here! We're queer! We don't want any more bears! Go make yourself a drink, and I'll be down in two shakes of a lamb's tail. What about Janie Slater? You think it makes a difference to her? Jenny Slater, yeah, how, how are you? Good. Ten years with you. Hey, Jenny Slater. Hey, Jenny Slater. You look really good. Hey, Jenny Slater. I feel like the maid. I just cleaned up this mess. Can we keep it clean for, for <laughs> ten minutes? These are the yummiest cookies I've ever had. Feeling lightheaded. And the waiter standing behind Hannah at the top of the stairs. Bow tie, 12 o'clock. He broke in here a week ago. He had his mask off. My, my Max Hedrum. It is February 12th, 1981. In 11 years, it's gonna be 1984, man. Think about that. The gamma's too high! Chris, I can't stop it! Harper, get out! Get out! Gentlemen, you can't fight in here. This is the war room. You'd have to check her pulse and notice those perfect breasts of hers aren't moving like they would if she was breathing. Mr. Gale, close them cameras down. We got a riot going on in the rec room in B-Wing. <laughs>